Hi everyone, welcome to 2011 Studies again. We're doing the final study on Acts 27 and sailing into Eurocladon. This is the conclusion of the study. Um, we're three days away from the uh, uh, second blood moon that's happening on October the 8th and hopefully I'm going to get some pictures uh, to be able to post on 2011 studies of the, the blood moon. I think the, the most significant one of the tetrad we've already, this is the beginning of the second one, we had the first one, is going to be um, in 2015, uh, time of Passover. And uh, I think that's significant because of the, the lining up in 2015 with uh, the judgment that happened on the cross in 33 AD, but how uh, 2015 is lining up with the three and a half years of Christ's ministry um, from 2011 to 2015. So that Blood Moon is really significant. Hopefully you'll be able to um, uh, look at it. I think it's, it's uh, let's see, Tuesday past midnight. So it's Wednesday morning at um, around 3 to 4 a.m., I believe. And uh, I looked last night, and the moon is actually really huge at this time. Um, uh, Hunter's Moon. So it's, it's going to be great to film that. It's going to be great to see it. Um, but I think these are significant... Uh, signs that God has given um, this tetrad and a lot of the um, you know books written today about that uh, are you know focusing on Israel but I think it's the houses of God I think that's the time of the judgment of the houses of God that's coming um, okay so we looked at Acts 27 let me just review this the contrary winds encountered by the 276 shows how people during the times of tribulation can be contrary to the gospel the switching of the first ship to the ship of Alexandria shows how the transition from tribulation to great tribulation is seen during our time. When we went out of the 8400 days and we entered into 2011 to 2018, which is the time of the great tribulation, uh, I believe it's shortened to three and a half years as Christ is promised in Matthew 24. Um, the tempestuous wind in Acts 27 is smoky victory or Tufo Nikos um, brought and this brought about the storm uh, Eurocla and this is the one that Paul was worried about um, and as far as the harbor goes you know that was one of the most difficult aspects of this and you know I, I know there's some pastors who are claiming in their studies that you know we abide in the church and all that no Christ is telling us to flee out of the church the churches. He is telling us when you see the abomination, get out. I don't think that's what that's saying. I think uh, we abide in Christ. Um, in, except ye, ye men abide in this ship, um, you can't be saved. We abide in Christ. That's who we abide in. So that was an important aspect of this study. Now we looked at already at the judgment unto victory and judgment unto truth. And both from uh, Matthew 12 and uh, Isaiah. So we're, we're looking at those two phrases very carefully because this is important um, in linking the, the uh, smoking flax that Jesus will not quench um, until we reach that time of judgment unto victory. When we reach that time, then it becomes quenched. And I had searched over and over again looking for verses related to flax, flax here, flax there, couldn't find anything. Nothing significant that would um, uh, indicate that it's smoking flax. So we had to continue to study, continue to pray and ask God about that because um, I believe he did, he lead me to some truth on that and I'm, this is what this study is about. Plus we're going to talk about the violence of the waves at the end of the the uh, storm. So. Let's see, um, Judgment into Victory duplicates the time of Jesus' three and a half year ministry in which he fulfilled Isaiah 42 and will once again fulfill, fulfill it in the year 2015. Now we looked at the difference between Judgment unto Victory, Nikos, and that's the New Testament um, phrase, and we looked under Judgment unto Truth, and we found that both apply. Both are absolute truth both apply to the two then and when Christ walked the earth and to now. Um, so we we promised new information um, on this and uh, 
this is it took me a while to to study this that's why this has sort of been delayed a week um but I wanted to make sure it's a good study because this is the final one on X27. And I may do one on X28 because that transfers right into them landing on the island of Melita. And, um, you know, the serpent bit Paul and he shook it off into the fire. The significance of that, I think, lines up at the time that Satan is uh, removed and the gospel goes forth free course. So that's a good thing. And. That's why I believe that this storm represented a time of great tribulation, which we are in right now. Um, so let's see. We have to um, the falling houses, the falling. I'm sorry, the falling away in the houses of God. Uh, the same thing is occurring today. We saw that um, when the Pharisees wanted to destroy Christ um, because of you know what he was doing performing miracles what he was teaching and so they sought to destroy him and that's the religious leaders of of his day um, attempting to destroy him uh, and you know you can you can do the parallels I mean that's that's what's happening today you know the the gospel is you know are people in the houses of God concerned about the coming of Christ on the last day I would say no they're not they're not looking for they're they're caught up into this left behind uh you know doctrine which they think they're gonna have a honeymoon with christ and then all of a sudden uh there's gonna be seven years of of you know this time period of tribulation on earth or great tribulation that is so incredibly arrogant because it's like saying well we don't have to go through it the believers do have to go through it you read matthew 24 and who is christ addressing he's addressing the disciples to their question the believers absolutely do go through great tribulation so there's not going to be a mysterious um silent rapture so to speak um there is going to be a rapture but it's going to be a, a catching up there but it's going to be the last day when christ uh comes in power and great glory um, so here's the, the verse that talks about um, the Pharisees going out to destroy. I'm doing a little bit of review right now, and we'll get right into the other information. Luke 19.45 And he went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold therein and them that bought, saying unto them, It is written, My house is the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And he taught daily in the temple, but the chief priests and scribes and the chief of the people sought to destroy him, and could not find what they might do, for all the people were very attentive to hear him. Um, now this is the verse we're familiar with because of the smoking flax. We've been discussing this. Um, this is during the fulfilling of Isaiah 42. The Pharisees went out and held counsel against him how they might destroy him. This is Matthew 12:14. Then the Pharisees went out and held, held counsel against him how they might destroy him. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all, and charged them that they should not make him known. And that was the fulfilling right there of Isaiah 42. Um, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not strive, nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed shall he not break, and smoking flax shall he not quench, till he send forth judgment unto victory. There's a, there's a point where he does, and that's when he sends forth judgment unto victory and we saw how that judgment uh, relates to the timing of the cross it, it the judgment in 2015 and then victory eventually comes when Christ uh, defeats death on the last day so we well he's already technically done that but that's the last enemy is what I'm trying to say um, so and and then it says uh, till he sent for judgment unto victory and his name and in his name shall the Gentiles trust now there's a possible answer to the smoking flax verses, and this has been something that I, I, I went back and forth, well, is it related to this flax verse or this flax verse? But we know the context. The context was that the, the Pharisees wanted to destroy him and for doing good. That's the idea 
of smoking flax right there and he won't quench that and uh, I mean he could have he could have at that point but he was fulfilling Isaiah 42 so we know from that that he he won't um, he won't do it again like this period of time we're in it it's very similar to the time that Satan had reign and control of the temple uh, in Jesus day and then during that three and a half year ministry we get to a point where it's going to be like 33 AD judgment's going to fall um, when Christ prayed you know father glorify thy name and, and the father said I have I have glorified it and I will glorify it again I believe that's a double duplication of what has happened um, from 33 AD and then what's happening gonna happen in uh, 2015 so anyway, here's here's some of the verses that talk about um, this uh, smoking flax, and I think the word that we had to look up was tow, t o w. It wasn't flax, and that was sort of a key. Isaiah one twenty one. How is the faithful city become a harlot? It was full of judgment, righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. The silver has become dross the wine mixed with water, the princes are rebellious, and companions of thieves, every one loveth gifts, and followeth after rewards. They judge not the fatherless, neither doth the cause of the widow come unto them. Therefore saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, Ah, I will ease me of mine adversaries, and avenge me of my enemies. And I will turn my hand upon thee, and purge, and purely purge away the dross, and take away all thy tin. I will restore thy judges as at the first, and thy counselors as at the beginning. Afterward thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, thy, the, the faithful city. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment, and her converts with righteousness. And the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together, and they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed. For they shall be ashamed of the oaks which ye have desired, and ye shall be confounded for the gardens that ye have chosen. For ye shall be as an oak whose leaf fadeth, and as a garden that hath no water. The strong shall be, here's the verse, this is verse 31 of Isaiah 1. And you're going to see a progression going on uh, in, from, in the book of Isaiah. This is the start of it. Um, and then later on, in, I think it's Isaiah 40, 43 and 44, it answers some of this information. Um, and as a garden that hath no water. And the strong shall be as tow. That's another word um, for twine or flax. And the maker of it as spark and they shall both burn together and none shall quench them okay now that sounds like okay well it's never gonna get quenched but that's it's it's saying none will quench them at that time because we're gonna see later that how Isaiah relates to this um, how Isaiah 43 I believe is is the uh, time of quenching okay here in Isaiah 1 we have the language of the faithful city now who is this um, you look at Jerusalem how that language is used with the old in the Old Testament and it was at once a faithful city and now the representation um, in the New Testament should be to the houses of God they should be the faithful city as the churches worldwide uh, their commission was to uh, go into all the world and bring the gospel um, so Isaiah 1 opens with the warning to Jerusalem and to Judah. Now let's read this because this is important to, to grasp this, this whole progression in Isaiah. The vision of Isaiah the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, they have forsaken the Lord, they have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger, they are gone away backward. So that lays the, the line um, concerning the vision uh, that Isaiah received. Now the strong, um, 
The strong shall be as tow, flax, and the worker as spark, and they shall both burn together, and none shall quench. Um, none shall quench up to a certain point, I should say. That's, that, there's qualifications to that. This time of burning flax involves false teachers and those who destroy truth. Now we have to keep in mind the, the Pharisees who did the same thing, and they were against Christ and wanted to destroy him. Uh, yet Christ, in order to fulfill Isaiah 42, acted in a certain way. He acted uh, not quenching the, the, the smoking flax at that time, um, not to draw attention to himself either. Then comes the time in which God does quench the toe. Now this is found in Isaiah 43. This is a progression I'm talking about. Isaiah 43, 14. Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake... I have sent to Babylon, and have brought down all their nobles, and the Chaldeans, whose cry is in the ships. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea, and a path in the mighty waters, which bringeth forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power, that they shall lie down together they shall not rise they are extinct they are quenched as tow there we are there comes a time when when this quenching happens now we know from um, uh, Christ fulfilling Isaiah 42 um, and uh, this is Isaiah 43 following it how this really connects and really relates remember ye not the former things neither consider the things of old behold I will do a new thing now it shall spring forth shall ye not know it I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert now that's good news because we're seeing a, a change happening here um, we're seeing the time where the, there's opposition uh, to the announcement of the coming of Christ, there's op op opposition to God's word itself um, not being uh, taken seriously in the houses of God. But there's there's coming a time where, th where things are going to change, and I believe that time is 2015. Isaiah 43, 25. I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember thy sins. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou, that thou mayest be justified. Thy first father has sinned, and thy teachers have tr transgressed against me. Therefore I have profaned the princes of the sanctuary, and I have given Jacob to the curse, and Israel to reproaches. God hath profaned the princes of the sanctuary. The leaders in the fallen houses of God experience judgment. But when God promises something incredible, this is the, the follow-up on this, He promised something very incredible. We continue in Isaiah, this progression in Isaiah, and this is found in Isaiah 44. Isaiah 44, 1. Now, yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Yeshurun, uh, that's another name from Israel, whom I have chosen. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, and floods upon the dry ground. Now that's really incredible, because we're talking about the time of Pentecost here, and this other language will say... Uh, you know, declare that. And remember, we're approaching 2015, which is the duplication of the three and a half years. The, the blessed is he that waits and comes at the 1335. Um, and we've seen that um, from the time that John uh, baptized Christ in 29 AD to 33 AD at the time of the cross. And then the disciples waited and they waited for that 50 day period until they arrived at Pentecost. That is so significant back then because salvation, God's Spirit was poured out, salvation was ushered forth, but it's also significant in the year 2015 because we have this duplication that is, God has done, and it's incredible. 
um, we're going to see this at, at Pentecost 2015, and this will be worldwide. Um, now listen to this language. This is verse 3. I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, and my blessing upon thine offspring. And they shall spring up as among grass, as willows by the water courses. Now this is curious too, verse 5. Notice how um, there's opposition to the name of Christ, there's opposition to um, you know, the Israel of God, the believers in Christ, the truth from the Bible. But listen to this. One shall say, I am the Lord's, and another shall call himself by the name of Jacob, and another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord, and surname himself by the name of Israel. What a reversal. What a change. People will stand up and say, yeah, I'm part of Israel. I'm part of Jacob. And that's important because the believers in Christ, that's who God has assigned these names to. And that's what they're, it's basically saying that people are going to stand up and say, I'm a believer too. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, this is verse 6, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last, and besides me there is no God. And who as I shall call, and who as I shall call, and shall declare it, and set it in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people, and the things that are coming, and shall come, let them show unto them. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have I not told told thee from from that time have I not declared it ye are even my witnesses is there a God beside me yea there is no God I, I know not any now three times in the book of Revelation we have the same language um, well in verse 6 where Christ says um, thus saith the Lord the King of Israel and his Redeemer the Lord of hosts I am the first, I am the last, and besides me there is no God. Now in Revelation we have this, uh, I, the first and last mentioned three times. Uh, Revelation 1.10, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest write in the book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. This is Revelation 1.17. And when I saw him, yeah, this is uh, talking about John seeing Christ uh, in his glory. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and death. Write these things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. That's the, those three things are important phrases. Because we're we're comparing right now um, Isaiah when Christ says, "I am the first and the last." Besides me, there is no God, and the Book of Revelation. So we have a really direct uh, correlation between this time and the Book of Isaiah. As we go through the progression, we see that God does quench the tow eventually. Um, he quenches the flax, the smoking flax, the the time of great tribulation. Um, and the most exciting part about that is that, you know, God is going to, according to Joel 2, God is going to remove Satan into a land of, that's barren and desolate. Um, we've studied that before. We can look at that again. Now, I wanted to uh, cover God saves Jacob out of great tribulation. Um, so th this language is really incredible because we're, we've lined this up to where the three and a half years when Christ was fulfilling Isaiah 42 as he was healing people that three and a half year ministry of his is very duplicated 
or mirrored, I should say, in this time when the, there's perilous times when Christ walked the earth, there's perilous times in the last days. And we're definitely in the last days. There's a longer period of time still to go. There's another three and a half years where the, uh, the husbandman, who is God, waits for the precious fruit of the earth and he has to send forth the rain, the spiritual rain of understanding and salvation. So that rain period has to come. That comes from Pentecost 2015 onward. And I believe we still have like a three and a half year period up into the year 2018. Um, I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. Um, now we looked at these time markers in, in Pentecost in 33 AD and Pentecost in 2015. You know, twice in history this happens. And this is phenomenal. This is like something that um, when God doubles a thing, uh, that there's an important aspect of God doubling there. Um, I just, it's really an incredible thing that we're living in this time. Um, you know, not only do we see like craziness going on in the world, but we're also, uh, you know, looking forward to the time when God reverses it. And that's an important aspect of this. We're months away. <laughs> we're six, six months out. And it's, uh, it's just a matter of you know counting down the months and getting this information out beforehand so that uh, you know people can understand what God has done and God uh, will be magnified he will be glorified during that time so we've covered the smoking flax and how that relates to the Pharisees and they're wanting to destroy Christ the tempestuous smoky victory which was brought about by um, or during the time of the 276 men sailing uh, in the ship of Alexandria and how that tempestuous wind brought about Eurocladon and it's exa the example of the Great Tribulation and the, the smoking flax which Christ will not quench until we arrive at the end of the, the Great Tribulation which has been shortened to three and a half years and that's going to happen and it's exciting that it's going to happen because we've lived in, in the times of the 8400 days we've lived in times of this crazy time called great tribulation and you know when christ when christ um rebukes satan when when christ uh makes a a huge change in this world and we we looked at the um I will shake the head yet a little while. Remember the years of Darius? And that was that happened in the second year of Darius when God said, yet a little while I will shake the heavens and the earth. That's very significant. That's going to be a huge change. And um, the strength of the kingdoms of the nations he will destroy. He will bring down the strength of the kingdom of the nations. There again, we're having this turnaround happening very shortly. Um, so I, I, I wanted to review a lot of the flax, the smoking flax verses, because um, you can do this uh, on your own, look up the word toe, and um, there's one verse that actually Samson, um, the, the, the bands broke off his hand with, due to his strength, like, um, I think the, the illustration was like fire under flax or under toe, it, it just, you know, he, his strength snapped them off. So that was an important start to look up the word uh, tow, T-O-W. And uh, I don't have the, the Hebrew number, but I can post that. So um, there's five uh, points that I wanted to, uh, maybe there's less than that. I, I might have just covered a couple. But anyway, um, this getting back to Acts 27, we have to look at this. We abide in the ship. There's some things I didn't cover in, in the other studies that I want to review really quickly now. Um, we abide in the ship, we abide in Christ and the kingdom of God until the storm is over. Then the gospel is brought into all the world. Now, something I don't think I covered, and I probably was going to reserve that for this last study. Not a hair falling from the heads, um, from their heads, Paul was um, encouraging them, meant that all on board had eternal security. And that's very significant. You see the language of salvation related to this Acts 27, riddled throughout it, little certain words. Um, be of good cheer, that's only related to believers. Um, just a, a few phrases that we've looked at that, and this is one of them, uh, not a hair falling from their heads. 
Now this is Acts 27. I wanted to cover this um, just in case I hadn't covered it, and I don't think I did. This is Acts 27, 34. Wherefore, I pray you to take some meat, for this is for your health. For there shall not an hair fall from the head of any of you. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of all of them, of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Okay, so we have like a, a celebration of the Lord's Supper here on the ship, and it's it's one of those things. It's it's another aspect of salvation being seen. They're participating in this. Um, but that phrase, there shall not a hair fall from the head of any of you, um, I do believe that means they had eternal security. And we're going to cover some verses on that. Uh, this is a phrase in the Bible which can be uh, God rescuing his people, but it also can be represented, represent, a representation of eternal security in Christ. Um, the people rescued Jonathan, and the phrase was used not one of his uh, not one hair of his head shall fall to the ground. This is first Samuel fourteen forty four. And Saul answered, God do so and more so also, for thou shalt surely die, Jonathan. And the people said unto Saul, Shall Jonathan die who has wrought this great salvation in Israel? God forbid, as the Lord liveth, there shall not one hair of his head fall to the ground for he hath wrought with God this day. So the people returned, I'm sorry, so the, so the people rescued Jonathan that he died not. He died not. Um, that was an important aspect of that. So there's a rescuing um, element and that's, that's what happened on the ship. They were, they were, they rode in on the boards, they swam the shore, uh, certain ones did and they they all made it to the shore safely and we're going to cover that in a little bit. Second Samuel 14 uses similar language as the woman pleads to the king on behalf of Joab. Her plea was to prevent the destruction of her and her son by the enemy but it was all about Absalom, uh, King David's son. Joab had set this woman up from Tekoa to go and, and to plead with him to get into uh, uh, King David's good, good graces, and she was using the illustration of her, her and her son, but it was really related to Absalom. The woman from Tekoa told um, of her fear of her and her son losing eternal inheritance, and th here's the reply to this. Um, and she said, "I pray thee, let the king remember the Lord thy God." that thou wouldest not suffer, not allow, the revengers of blood to destroy any more, lest they destroy my son. And he said, As the Lord liveth, there shall not one hair of thy son fall to the earth. Um, 2 Samuel fourteen sixteen, And this, this was her, her concern about the inheritance um, of her and her son. The king will hear to deliver his handmaiden out of the hand of, of the man that would destroy me and my son together out of the inheritance of God. So here that phrase is related in Second Samuel 14 to not a hair falling to eternal inheritance. And I think that's an, an, a very important aspect to uh, that phrase that no matter what, I mean, yes, we could possibly die on this earth, but our eternal inheritance, not one hair will fall to the ground. We, we're secure in that. We are very secure in Christ. And, uh, you know, like Paul said, not, not death, not uh, tribulation, nothing can separate us from Christ. So that's, you know, that's the good news. Um, during the times of the storm, the great tribulation, the smoky victory, even then, we can't lose our internal inheritance. And that's what this Acts 27 is all about. Now this is Acts 27, um, 34. Wherefore I pray you take some meat, for this is for your health, for there shall not an hair fall from the head of any of you. And, we in that, and when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of all of them. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. 
they were all of good cheer and they all took some meat um, so the violence of the waves this is the last aspect of Acts 27 um, and it's an important aspect of it because you see this language much like contrary the winds were contrary and people are contrary during the time of tribulation the violence of the waves um, you know we have this illustration going on uh, of the waves uh, breaking apart the ship and the hinder part of the ship I should say so let's conclude Acts 27 Acts 27 38 and when they had eaten enough they lightened the ship and cast out the wheat 39 and when it was day they knew not the land but they discovered a certain creek with a shore into the which they were minded if it were possible to thrust in the ship and when they had taken up the anchors they committed themselves unto the sea and loosed the rudder bands and hoisted up the mainsail to the wind and made toward shore and falling into a place where two seas met they ran the ship aground and the forepart struck fast and remained uh, remained unmovable but the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves that's the phrase I'm looking at um, and the soldiers counsel was to kill the prisoners lest any of them should swim out and escape but the centurion willing to save Paul kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land the rest and the rest some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship and so it came to pass that they all escaped I'm, I'm sorry that they escaped all safe to land that safe is a very important word also relating to salvation <clears throat> so I believe that the ship related to uh, you know abiding in Christ it can represent uh, the kingdom of God because we have the account of that same word violence a similar word violence it's all lined up um, as far as the violence of the waves that's Greek 970 uh, Bia so I think that this the kingdom of God suffering violence um, is a part of uh, the hinder part of the ship at the end part of the great tribulation the, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and again we're repeating that time of John the Baptist to the you know the cross and into the Pentecost so we have this illustration before us and this language is very similar um, as we approach the uh, 1335 and uh, 2015 um, for this is he this is Matthew 11 I wanted to point out the violence uh, which happened uh, at the time of Christ for this is he of whom it is written behold I send my messenger before thy face which shall prepare the thy way before thee verily I say unto you among them that are born of women there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he and from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force for all the prophets and the law prophesied until John and if you will receive it this is Elias which was for to come he has he that has ears he that hath ears to hear let him hear okay so we have this illustration of the violence that the kingdom of heaven suffering violence you look at the shipwreck the waves the violence of the waves the hinder part of the ship was destroyed during during this time of great tribulation the, the four part you know launched in there and that's that's significant too I really didn't even study that but you look at the time of uh, well both tribulation periods you know and it could be that the people who went through the first part of the 8400 days um, were were more uh, stand fast or st standing fast because I think the the hinder part of the the great tribulation um, can relate to the judgment on the houses of God um, and it's you know it's still though you have this illustration of the 276 who were saved during this time um, a, a really important number like 153 God just 
uses these really significant numbers and the factors of those numbers uh, like 153 shows salvation with the number 17. Um, so this is Matthew 11 for oh no I already read Matthew 11 the same uh, violence happened during the three and a half years of Jesus ministry is happening today and the violent take it by force now that was Greek 970 now here's here's the same word just a different verse Acts 21 27 and when the seven days were almost ended the Jews which were of Asia when they saw him in the temple stirred up all the people and laid hands on him crying men of Israel help this is the man that teaches all men everywhere against the people and the law and this place and further brought Greeks also into the temple and have polluted this holy place uh, I hope that lights not going out okay um, for they had seen before for they had seen before with him in the city of Trophimephus and an Ephesian whom they supposed that Paul had brought into the temple and all the city was moved and the people ran together and they took Paul and drew him out of the temple and for, and forthwith the doors were shut and as they were about to kill him tidings came unto the chief captain of the band that all Jerusalem was in an uproar this is Acts 21 35 and when he he came upon the stairs so it was that he was born or he was lifted up of the soldiers for the violence of the people now that's the identical word that's used as like the violence of the waves so we see the contrariness uh, that happens from from people during the times of great tribulation and tribulation they're opposed to the gospel of Christ they're opposed to the announcing of the coming of Christ on the last day and you have this violence that happened to the ship where the 276 uh, had to swim to shore because of the violence of the kingdom um, that happened to the ship, which is, I think, a representation of the kingdom of God. It represents that. Uh, we abide into the kingdom of God, whose you know, leader is Christ himself. We abide in Christ. Um, and I think this is important, that uh, the violence of the people um, was seen in Acts 21.35. Um, so we see this hinder part of the ship uh, could indicate the the ending time of the great tribulation um, but then again we see you know follow on to Acts 28 because uh, the serpent is shaken off into the fire and you know the gospel goes forth we're gonna have that same um, dramatic change that happening in 2015 uh, let's see okay this is um, they all made it safe to shore. Uh, the, this is the last part of this study. I, I, that's what I. Yeah, th these numbers were a little bit different in, um, in the word uh, Diaz Azio. Diaz Azio. That's that um, saving. Okay. So anyway, um, Acts twenty one, twenty seven. No, I already read that. <laughs> it's early in the morning. Acts twenty one forty two, and the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose, and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land, and the rest some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they all escaped that they escaped all safe to land. We're looking at that word safe. Dia Sozio. This is an illustration of salvation during the time of Great Tribulation. Um, now we're going to conclude this study with this word Dia Sozio. Uh, this is uh, 1 Peter 3 18 and this uses that same word relating to uh, Noah and his family saved by water um, for Christ also hath once suffered for sins the just for the unjust 
that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in, in prison. I've always puzzled about that verse. That's, that's a mystery to me. Um, what actually happened then? Which sometimes were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the the ark was preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. Man, I've got to really look at this verse. This is very, very curious. Which were sometimes disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. We know we're in the period of God's long suffering right now. We know we are. Paul is the first example of God's long suffering. So we know this is significant. Okay. The like figure wherein, whereunto even baptism does also now save uh, sozio us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being sub subject unto him. Um, the like figure whereunto baptism also now save does save us. And that's so socio, that's socio. Dia socio is the first one. They were saved by water. See, I, I believe it's like the act of um, saving. Okay, so that's what I was getting a little bit confused about with these numbers. 1295 um, Dia socio and then there's uh, there's the other one. Uh, oh, here it is. Greek 4982. And that's just um, socio. Okay, so that's Greek 4982. And that's the socio was the the one in Acts 27 that was used. So that's uh, they all got safely to shore. So that was the act of getting safely to shore. That's it for Acts 27. <laughs> I kind of struggled through this one. I don't know why. It's just early in the morning, so you know, bear with me on certain studies. But you know, the importance is that that this information is coming forth from God right now. And it's uh, a watershed. It really is. It's amazing how God has done what he has done in these final days. Um, I'm going to make an announcement in probably about two weeks. But uh, there's, gonna, there's some good things coming. So um, we have to uh, you know, keep studying, uh, keep presenting. Um, Got to look more into the 1335 because we're months out from that. Hopefully I can post some um, uh, blood moon pictures uh, in the next study from that we will we'll take during the October the 8th uh, eclipse. And that, we have to keep in mind that those land on precise feast days, so they're significant uh, in 2014 and 2015. But I think the big one is at the time of Passover in 2015. Because I believe that that line, the time of Passover or the time of the cross, um, lines up with judgment. I believe uh, falling on the houses of God or ensuing at that point. I don't, I really don't know, but it seems like it does line up uh, to the year 2015. How God brings that all up to pass? That's completely His thing, and you know, we just we just proclaim what the Word of God says, and it's it's saying that. God's going to be reversing things and it's good news my name is Marty Cattuzzo and uh, this is 2011 studies <laughs> good night <laughs>